And talking of opening up Vista to other issues as you do that, um, then of course you, uh, you break the CIA secret prison story, which Mm -hmm. Back to language, I'm not sure the CIA used the phrase secret prison, but, right. but um, <laughs> and you find that they're operating in Afghanistan and Eastern Europe and Thailand. And I, again, can you uh, gently uh, describe uh, how you uh, yeah. got into that? They're all obviously somewhat related. It's all about mm -hmm. national security right. in that sense. But well, well, with the prison stories, it really started, uh, this was a two-year when I look over it, it took me two to two and a half years to figure out what this was. And it started again as just a tiny little piece of the puzzle, which doesn't have a context because you don't even know what you're seeing. And then you get another one and then another one. And now you're thinking, well, can we describe a system here? Is this something that's, how big is it? How many people are in it? And every single story along the way was very painstakingly done and took forever, which is the luxury that I had. Of course, with one hand, I had to write the daily stories about X, Y, and Z, which in that, <laughs> in this time, we're talking about a huge number of things. WMD leading up to Iraq, but also failure of intelligence over 9-11, the effort to counter terrorists around the world, the effort on our part to try to judge who are the terrorists and what are they doing. So a lot is going on that you, to keep you busy as a reporter on a normal, you know, as a normal beat reporter. So I um, kept, though, this other strain going because I had made a little bit of progress, which was, which started out as, how are they doing all this? Like, I took my military experience where we'd go back and look at a, a campaign and say, how did they fight it? What were their tactics? And were they successful? And what were the trade-offs? Very basic things. And I tried to apply those things to the war on terror, you know, to counterterrorism operations that were done by the CIA. So what are the tactics? That's really hard <laughs> when you're talking about covert operations, which they're all classified and people, you know, can lose their jobs and get in big trouble for talking to you about. So it's just very painstakingly done. And after a while, um, got to see that there was a system in place. At the same time, we're writing about these rendition flights. Individuals started out with individual places and individuals who would show up one place detained and then they'd show up another place and you just really see one guy and you're like what is, what's going on with him how did he get from there to there uh, and really some of the luck of the beginning chase was facilitated by a foreign reporter who had no, knew somebody who worked at the airport in some obscure place in Pakistan and was able to call that person up or go visit them. And they would write in the Dawn newspaper, you know, Pakistan, some little detail that nobody reading that paper would pick up on, but I picked up on it as a part of the puzzle. Okay, we have a tail number. And so you put that in our, you know, in a database, and my, well, that comes up with something pretty odd, which is a bunch of companies, and you know, one thing leads to another. It took a lot of time, but um, pretty soon it just, we start peeling back more of the onion and, and see that they have this. When I finally, though, got to spend full time on the prisons, my real, my real goal was still to answer those questions. Okay, so it's the CIA that's the primary um, tool in, in uh, counterterrorism operations. It's actually not the military. It's a small segment of, of special ops, but other than that, it's not the military. So already that's attractive to me as a reporter because most people think it's the military, and it's really this group here. And they're you know way below the radar, which to me as a reporter is more fun. Um, so... Um, I learned quickly that the most fruitful thing that is going on is their relationship with other intelligence services around the world. Well, unfortunately, which I thought, I, I can get them to talk about that. That's kind of, you know, it might be a good news story for them, you know, because they're capturing people this way. It's true. That's how we capture most people is working with foreign uh, intelligence services. 
Well, no, because that happens to be the most sensitive relations that the U.S. government has with the other country, even though they might be very productive, because the other country has its own politics, does not want to talk about that, does not want to admit anything. But for that year that I did the prison story, that's really what I concentrated on. By this time, I have many strands as a reporter, many things, many projects that I'm working on to gather, to gather enough facts, and they all... You know, they all have a hundred little facts in them because nobody is going to talk to me about the big... No one's going to sit down and say, okay, this is how it works. We have these and this and the planes fly over here and, you know, this all is centered in the counterterrorism center and this is how that operates. No, every... It's all just accumulating little teeny tidbits. And so we finally were able to accumulate enough tidbits 